Well, I want to introduce Hillary to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this is a perfect topic actually for me. And actually a lot of people in the private Facebook group, we've been talking about self-care and how to take care of ourselves. And I go on these like once a year kicks on like being, being focused on taking care of myself. And I currently just started one of those kicks. <laughs> so, okay, nice. I know. So I'm so excited to talk yes. to you because this is so relevant for me right now. Good. But before we get started, I'm wondering if you can share a little bit about your story so people know who you are and what's been going on with you. Sure. Um, so I am a, a, a health coach and personal trainer, and I worked in the corporate world for, gosh, like 18 years, um, most recently in higher education. And while I had a really great career, it just was not fulfilling to me. And actually, maybe the breaking point was, was, um, you know, the lack of self-care and how it was, the stress was impacting my own health. And um, I started having a lot of health issues. I had some autoimmune issues going on. And I had, I just kept taking a deep look at myself because I was doing, like, I was eating well, I was working out. Um, I was, it just, um... I couldn't figure out why my health was going downhill and it really was um, the lack of self-care in terms of stress that was affecting me. So that actually was a huge epiphany in my life and it made me realize I wasn't living my higher purpose, which I felt was to help others and share really what true health and wellness means. So um, about a year and a half ago now, I left the corporate world and started my own business, um, Healthy Transformations by Hillary. I love that. Thanks. And I think it's so important to, to kind of listen to our bodies, you know, mm -hmm. like our bodies are telling us something. And I feel like that's also why I've been on a kick like very recently, because I'm always tired, I'm always fatigued, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I can't do anything. I can't keep up with my kids. So it's kind of like your body is telling you something through that. Right. And I will, I do want to add, I mean, there is too much of a good thing, you know, and I had realized being a type A person, I felt like more is better and more working out when you're already overwhelmed and stressed is not the right thing to do. And that did contribute to my health issues as well. So yeah. And that is a good point. Mm -hmm. because I think as parents, and I know you're a mom too. Yes. Like every time I think about getting fit or like taking care of myself, and actually I want to come back to that because I think self-care is more than just getting fit. And we should, right. we yep. should maybe, well, let's just do that now. Let's talk about what self-care is because I think okay. people have, in my, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like people have two different ideas of what self-care is. Yes. One, it means like I have to eat celery and like starve to death go to the gym like four to five days a week or two it just means like let me get my nails done let me take a bubble bath yes so, what's self-care to you how would you define well, it um you know that's how the second way well I guess both of those used to be how I thought about self-care but now as being a coach and working with women um it's really changed and my own self-discovery has changed the way I think of self-care so I read one of my one of my clients sent this article to me and I just absolutely love this quote. So true self care is not salt baths and chocolate cake. It's making the choice to build a life you don't need to regularly escape from. And to me, that is self care. Um, as opposed to kind of superficial things such as getting a pedicure or a massage or creating a life that you don't enjoy by intense exercise and extreme diets as well. Which is so important to hear because I think the, the parents that listen to this are dealing with kids with anxiety, kids with OCD were depleted to begin with because mm -hmm. we're losing sleep. Everything is a little bit of a bigger deal. So there's an exhaustion factor. And I feel like a lot of us put our kids first, second, and third, and it almost feels selfish to take time to do something for ourselves. And I try to say to other people, although I don't follow this myself, you know, that it's like put your oxygen mask on first. If you don't take care of yourself, right, 
then you're not, you're going to be depleted. And I know that for myself, when I am exhausted or I haven't taken the time for myself, I'm snappy. I don't have patience with my kids. I am not, they, I'm not a good, like anxiety coach to them. Yes. Uh You know, so. Right. And I definitely agree with that. I mean, especially just everyday living is, you know, sometimes difficult to juggle all the responsibilities, but throw in the mix, you know, you have children with, you know, needs that you're focusing on with anxiety. Um, If you're not at your best, how can you provide the example to them, you know, to help them get to a better place? So I really feel as parents, it's our responsibility to evolve and to focus on how we can be better. And that doesn't mean doing more or giving more of ourself. It's um, focusing inward a little bit and um, improving that way. Yeah. And I think looking at it in maybe three categories, you know, because I think we we think of self-care in in just one little category. But if we look at, you know, and I think you and I have talked before, and I like the way you break it out into like mindset, how Mm -hmm. we think, um, our diet and like how we eat, like our lifestyle, and then um, exercise and, and well, I guess there's no other word for exercise. But I think those three categories, and Mm -hmm. I know, like I've really worked on the first category. To me, that's the easiest category. And mm-hmm. I've been a better mom just in the last four weeks because my mindset has shifted. You know, right. I'm like appreciating that every little thing. Um, the other two categories are kind of like the things I'm struggling with. Right. But I wonder if you can go through those a little bit. And sure. Um, so we can start with the exercise portion. Um, you know, I, I think that we, you know, what, keeps people from starting an exercise program is they just think it's so much, it's so much, you know, they don't know where to start and they don't know how to add it to another busy, their already busy schedule. But um, I wanted to talk about something. It's a mouthful. It's, it's the acronym is NEAT and it stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. (laughs) And so we'll just call it NEAT because it's like a long, and um, it's, it's the amount of calories that you're burning just in daily activities. So um, just by standing two hours more a day, we can lose up to 30 pounds more a year. So especially if you're, you know, working a desk job, you're sitting a lot. Um, I suggest, you know, looking into getting a sit stand desk for your office or getting up and taking a break and walking around the office, walking outside, walking up the up, um, up and down the stairs, um, even fidgeting, not just standing still, will burn more calories. So actually, it's been shown that um, people who are on really calorie restrictive diets, their NEAT goes down because they're so fatigued. They just don't have any energy, and it cancels out the lower restriction diets. So that's interesting. Yes. Um, so really it's just thinking about exercise in a different way. Sure. I do advocate strength training. If you're going to do an, a form of exercise, especially as we're aging, um, I'm 42. So, um, strength training is really the way to go. It gets the most bang for your buck by building muscle. It's going to burn more fat more than any type of like cardio exercise. But to burn more calories, you can just up your need. So you can think about different ways that you can incorporate a little bit more movement and it can even involve your family too, you know, like doing outside activities and things like that. I love incorporating what we already do because, yes. I mean, that is definitely, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to this, this is their barrier too. When I think about adding another thing onto my plate, Yep. metaphorically, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm like, there's just no way I don't have time to go to the gym. You know, yep. like, that's actually been something I've been talking about with my husband. I'm like, I want to, I want to be more fit, but I don't have time, especially right now to go to the gym. So I love this idea of neat where mm-hmm. you can incorporate activities that you already do, but maybe do them in a different way or yep. make them a little bit more exercise oriented or just lengthen them a little bit more, you know, little bits add up. It's really like the compound effect. So small actions add up to like a big result. So, you know, 
park your car for, I, I think that was a big thing of several years ago, you know, with the steps. Mm -hmm. I mean, the steps really is a thing. So park your car a little bit further at the grocery store or just take a few extra minutes to walk around, you know, when in your day and you're burning more calories. And I'm one of those like all or nothing people. So I'd be like, well, that's not going to do enough. That's not going to do enough. So I like this compounding idea. Yes. That, that there is research to show that is enough if you continue to do those things. And, and I'm much more likely to stick with something like that than to come up with some rigorous exercise routine that exhausts me and then I stop doing it. Right. And, you know, I think that's what intimidates a lot of people. And frankly, for myself, um, I used to be a cardio bunny and spend like hours doing like training for half marathons, um, doing Orange Theory, if people watching have that in their town. Um, it's like a really intense boot camp. And I wasn't seeing any results. It wasn't until I cut back on that intense working out and added the strength training and really cut back on the cardio is when I saw changes in my body. So. Yeah, that's kind of uplifting to hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. To that. All right. So that's exercise. Yes. Um, what about diet? Okay. So um, I really advocate home cooked meals. It's just really good for balance. And I mean, it's been proven that if, you know, you stick, you're going to eat less calories or less um, calorie laden meals if you home cook your meals. So I know a lot of busy families probably get takeout quite a bit. Um, but my suggestion is, is getting into a habit of taking one chunk of time, whether it be on the weekend or in the middle of the week, get your family involved if you can. <clears throat> and, you know, make double of what you're making for dinner already, or, you know, make something like in the crock pot and then on the stove at the same time. So you're not taking like double the amount of time, pack it up and have it ready for lunches during the week. And um, <laughs> I was gonna tell the story, so I've been meal prepping myself for, gosh, like six years now. And, you know, my husband used to think it was a drag, but um, he lost 35 pounds by doing no e extra exercise, just by taking the home cooked meals to his work. And so he would also kind of, <laughs> the guys, he, he's, um, he's a mechanic and he would be heating up the food and like his, the guys next to him would smell the food and they were very interested. They're like, maybe she could make some extra. So I tried it <laughs> for a couple of weeks and the guys lost like a whole belt buckle size in just like two weeks by bringing like, instead of going out to eat and eating the home cooked meals. So That's crazy. Yes. Yes. This might be an extreme case, but I'm just, this is the absolute truth. Yeah, and I do like the idea of batch cooking um, because when you say home cooked meals, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like there are certain days where like I'm working in my practice and there's just no way. Right. But Sundays are always a quiet day, you know, like making a couple of meals and freezing them. That's doable. Yeah. Like, and I mean, what we'll do is, you know, just like grill a bunch of chicken Well, we live in Arizona, so it's warm mm -hmm. all the time. I mean, you've got the crock pot that's really no intense you know, preparation for that. If you guys are familiar with Instapots, those are like pressure cookers. You can make food really quick. Mm. So we'll just make, you know, a bunch of chicken or, you know, a soup or something in bulk. And it doesn't have to be gourmet. You know, you can just experiment with different spices, make simple recipes and have that to take. I'm going to totally start doing that. <laughs> That's Good. like my new thing. I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. So the last one, uh, mindset. Yes. I think a lot of times people don't think of that as part of self care. We just think of very concrete, literal, like physical things, but mindset's a big one too. Right. And you know, I don't know what people, re I don't know that people really do understand mindset. I know I didn't a few years ago and you were saying Natasha that it's easy for you. I definitely don't think it has been easy for me. So, um, because people just don't think that that's important. You know, like you just kind of get in your own, you get stuck in the routine and you don't really, 
I, I guess you don't really understand the impact of how your mind and body connect. So um, for me, it was just starting to listen to different things, like to read different books. And I know asking people to read a book when they're already busy is just crazy. So what I do, so you don't have to spend any extra time is you get audiobooks or listen to podcasts while you're driving, while you're, if you are working out, you could do it on breaks. And so you just get that additional information. Um, and I love that quote by Einstein saying a problem cannot be solved at the same level it was created. So especially if, if um, parents are struggling um, with issues with their children and trying to get the best help possible, you know, opening themselves up to these different ways of thinking might help them, um, you know, make a, a better lifestyle for everybody. Absolutely. And I mean, I think it's easy for me to shift into that just because I'm a therapist. And so, right. you know, <laughs> that's what I teach. But, yeah. but even, you know, I can definitely, you know, tweak my mindset or not be po focusing on it. And then it becomes a problem. And I think people should be careful what they consume because you want to mm -hmm. listen to upbeat things. So if you, if you, yes. like, that's why, yes. like, I make sure my Facebook group is as positive as it can be. You know, mm -hmm. even though we're discussing really hard things, that's why every Friday we do our wins, our challenge and our wins, because I want people to, to fill their brain with positivity. Yes. And hope. Yes. Because if you, ch exactly. if you shift your mindset, then, then everything, you look at everything differently. You look at problems differently. Right. And I cannot advocate enough. I used to scoff about meditation. I used to think it was nonsense. Like as a type A personality, I have like just a racing mind typically. And I would sit down and try to do it. And I'm like, I'm doing this wrong. I don't know how to do it. You know, but you know, in starting the journey to become a coach, well, it was even before that. I'm like, there's gotta be something in this meditation. Cause I keep hearing about it. And, um, it has really profoundly changed my life and it does not need to take a lot of time just starting with five minutes, getting a guided meditation app. Um, I've had the same, like my clients have said, you know, they don't know how to meditate. They're just didn't want to spend time doing it. But once I explain, there's really no wrong way to do it. <laughs> you just got to start doing it. It profoundly changed their lives as well. So I highly suggest that. I mean, this is easy on your phone. And if you're having a really stressful day, just take five minutes and breathe. Yeah. And I'm I'm right there with you. My my mind is uh, totally racing. Mm -hmm. But I found like I think like the Calm app or other apps like that. Yes. You know, her voice is very soothing and she walks you through it. So I could sit there and be like quote unquote meditating. But she's the one talking and right. she gives you like this space. And then I love it because then she'll come in and she'll be like, I know your mind is wandering. And that's okay. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, and then I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. Like <laughs> she just gave me permission. Exactly. Yeah. So there are definitely apps out there to to help with that too. Mm -hmm. So and the one thing I do for myself, which is, you know, I think pretty hedonistic, but it's, you know, self-care is I float. I don't know if you've ever heard of floating, but it's, um, in like the water tanks. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of it. Yes. I have yeah. never done it. And you know, they're not paying for me to advertise. <laughs> but okay. I, I go to true rest and they're all over the nation, but there's other ones too. And they, they put you in this kind of like a sensory deprivation tank and I'm very claustrophobic. So that took me a little while to get used to yeah. but it's full of Epsom salt and you float on the top. And then they pipe in music and like the water is like body temperature and you, you, you kind of go into it either a meditative state or you fall asleep, but it's great for your back. And I have a really bad back problem, yeah. but also it's really good for your mind because it's like literally the only time my mind will shut off is when oh. I flow. So I need to try this. Yeah. You can get a membership. You know, I, I do it like every other week, you know, just to <laughs> stress my, like stretch my back out, but mm -hmm. really the mental component is probably even the, the better part for me. Is right. Yes. That quiet time. I'm sorry. You mentioning the back issues kind of made me think I wanted to give a tip. If you are having back issues, the best way to help them, because I've had some pretty serious injuries and actually one of the injuries was that orange theory. Mm -hmm. Um, but by, to, um, in order to improve, ugh, 
in order to improve your back pain, um, strengthening your core, which is really, it's called your global stabilization system. So if you strengthen your core, your oblique abdominals, it will help support your back. So another, uh, you know, another ad advocation for a strength training routine. So yeah, good to hear. Actually, my sister was really pushing that over Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good. <laughs> She's like, Natasha, you just have to get on the floor and build up your core. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I was like, uh, but it's true. It's true. Cause I've had physical therapists tell me that too. So that's a good tip. Yes. So I know that you're doing a challenge coming up. If you can talk a little bit about that, cause that would be super sure. exciting to hear about. Sure. So I have a free five day challenge coming up. It's starting December 3rd and it's called the holiday survival challenge. And, um, you know, I just know for me, while the holidays are very nostalgic, they can end up being very stressful and it kind of puts us out of the routine with our, if we do have a health and wellness routine, it kind of throws it out of whack or, you know, there's lots of parties and social events and it can be really overwhelming and maybe feel like we're taking two steps back. <laughs> so, um, the challenge is going to provide, um, some quick 20 minute at home workouts. So it would be great to, to improve core strength, um, with it, no equipment required. Um, and then I'm also going to help coach about NEAT, how I explained those daily activities that burn more calories. So I'm going to give a list of different ideas and how many calories they burn. So you could pick like um, several a day to build up to extra calorie burn. And then I'm going to um, focus on um, getting rid of bad habits. So a lot of us have well, everything we do really is a habit. And I have felt in the past, you know, um, a slave to my habits and not really, you know, you say you're not going to do something and then you try to use willpower and it just doesn't work. And then you go back to the way it was. So I'm going to teach a um, couple, a couple powerful techniques to work with your brain instead of against it to get rid of bad habits instantly. Um, so that'll really help during the stressful holiday season. If one of the habits is to eat more or do, you know, um, that really are not helpful for our overall health and, well, health and wellness. And then, um, oh gosh, one other, well, we're going to have a private Facebook for coaching and accountability as well. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I think it's really good because I know with me, I'm always like, well, the holidays, that's not a good time to start anything. Right. And, and I was even thinking about that when I just decided like yesterday that I'm going to go on this health kick. <laughs> you know? So I'm right. like, you know, my husband's like, oh yeah, like round 47 or whatever, you know, like her new phase. Cause I'm like, I need a blender. I need this, you know, and I do that all the time. I go on these like little kicks and then they, they fizzle out. And then I thought, well, why am I starting this around the holidays? But like, what a perfect time to start. Like why it's, first of all, it's always something, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, but also I feel like to, to become more mindful and more healthy, like this is the perfect time to do that. Right. And really the challenge is designed not to add like a really much more to your plate. It's to show how you can do less and achieve more. So, um, how to work smarter, not harder. And this is the perfect opportunity to start building, you know, to help eliminate bad habits and then start creating new ones to start 2019 off right. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to sign up. Okay, well, great. <laughs> Tell so, people where they can find you and where they can sign up for the challenge. Okay, so um, I could give you the, the website in the show notes, but I also, I'm on Instagram and Facebook at healthy by Hillary and it's Hillary with one L and there's links in the post there to China sign up for the challenge. Okay. So I will leave a link below in the show notes okay. and on YouTube, I'll leave a link in the comments. Okay. And then you have a Facebook group that people can join now or a Facebook page. Yes, I do. It's called fit 40 and fabulous. Um, and it's, it's for women who want to look and feel good in their forties and beyond. So 
Well, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's all of us. I know. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This is like sure. perfect timing. And I think it's, it's so helpful for a lot of the parents that, that listen. Okay. Well, great. Thanks again for having me. All right. We'll see you in your challenge. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye.